Hey guys, so this video is an introduction to logarithmic functions. By the end of this module, we'll be able to find the inverse of an exponential function, translate between exponential and logarithmic notation, just switch between the two, uh, simplify exponential and logarithmic expressions using that property to translate in between, and then we're also going to be graphing logarithmic functions using those properties of inverse functions. So inverse functions are like multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. They undo each other. But when we're graphing or when we're talking about something on the coordinate plane, the inverse operation, all it does is it flips the x and the y value. So if you look, the function y equals x squared, the inverse of it is the square root of x. The opposite of squaring something is square rooting. So if you look at the table of values, all that happened was the x and the y just flipped in this case. So all my y values are now my x values for the inverse. Exponential functions have a property that exponential and logs are inverses of each other. In previous modules, we discussed that the key point to exponential functions can be found by negative 1, 0, 1, 1 over b and b, whatever that base is, uh, and that's exponential functions, while in logarithmic, it's just the flip of that. So for this equation here, it would be a half, 1, 2, negative 1, 0, 1. So it just swapped the x and the y. Or, if you look at it, it's going to be 1 over your b, which in this case is that 2, okay, uh, 1, and then whatever that b is, and then it's going to be negative 1, 0, and 1. So that is how you can translate between exponential and logarithmic functions. They are just the inverse of each other. They're flipped over that y equals x line, which makes the tables flip. So now how do we move back and forth between the two functions? So. I'm going to use the property that 3 to the third equals 27. So 3 to the third, 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. Now, in exponential notation, we would say 3 to the x equals 27. And you would have to tell me x equals 3. This is exponential. because there's an exponent. Now what happens in the log, or rhythmic, this b comes down to the other side. So basically if you think about it as dragging the 3 to the other side, and it pulls down the x. So it's a x equals the log base 3, now it's a subscript, it's written below, of 27. So what happens is that exponent comes down and becomes a regular text, and the base becomes a subscript. A couple examples of this. This is written in logarithmic form. So now I want to write it in exponential form. So the 3 is going to now not become subscript. It's going to become regular text. It's going to move on the same side as that 5. The 243 is going to stay in the same spot. But that 5 is the exponent. It's going to be written as 3 to the fifth power. So that 3 
is the base. That is my base, and it's being moved back and forth. Same way with example two here. Now I want it written as a log. So I'm going to take this six and pull it to the other side. So the negative three comes down as a full text, no longer superscript. It's not written above. Okay. Then I'm going to write that as the log. What number did I pull onto that other side? The six. And then the 216, one over 216 stays the same. So that's how I translate between one and the other. The next three problems, oh, uh, the example three is using these same problems to solve. So the first thing I want you to say is, okay, I have to evaluate, so I have to solve this. Okay, I have to simplify. Easiest way to simplify this is to create an equation. I don't know what it equals at this point, so I'm going to use x. Now, without the use of a calculator, it's going to be difficult. So what I do is I write it in exponential form. So I'm going to take this 8 and I'm going to move it over here. So 16 equals 8 to the x. Well, you're going to say to yourself, well, 8 times 2 is 16. It's not 8 times 2. It's 8 raised to what power? So the trick with any exponential function or equation at this point is I have to rewrite it. Now, 8 and 16 are both powers of 2. So 2, two to the 4th is 16. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And 8 is 2 to the 3rd. So this becomes 2 to the 4th equals 2 to the 3x. In our previous modules, I taught you that these 2's cancel out. So I'm left with 4 equals 3x, or x equals 4 thirds. So now I have just solved for what power of 8 is 16, the 4 thirds power. Now to calculate it on the calculator is another story. So if I have a equation like that and I want to evaluate it in my calculator, you have, uh, it's easier on the TI inspires because I can plug in log and put in those numbers exactly. But if you only have a scientific calculator, like the one that's built into your computer, that's the only one I'm using, you have to do what is called the change of base formula. So what you're going to do to evaluate on the calculator is you're going to say the log of 16 divided by the log of 8. So all I did was I took this, and now I'm turning it into a division problem. So if I go to my calculator, you'll notice that the log doesn't show up. So I go up to view, and I go to scientific. Now I can choose either one of the log base 2 or the log base 10. It does not matter. All I do with this is I say, 16 log base 2 divided by 8 log base 2 equals 1.333, which is 4 over 3. It would work the same way if I did 16 log 10 divided by 8 log 10 equals 1.3333. So it doesn't matter which way I, I, which one I use, the log base 2 or log base 10. In general, you can use either one 
but you have to use the same one when you're doing the division. So you can't switch between halfway through the problem. And that's how you translate between the two. So these are your practice problems. Please uh, do these by hand and then check, especially these, check these on the calculator. These will be your answers. You can pause right now to get those answers. Right now we're going to move on to graphing. Now graphing uses the same A, H, and K as before. A multiplies the Y values. H moves left or right. Remember, H is the opposite one. So if it's plus, you're moving left. And if it's minus, you're moving right. And the K moves up or down. The only thing that changes from exponential to logarithmic, exponential functions, the asymptote was a horizontal line. So if I, let's say y equals b to the x, okay, the asymptote was a horizontal line. And it was generally found on the x-axis unless it was controlled by k. For logarithmic functions, it's a y-axis. So the asymptote is a vertical line, and it's controlled by h. So it moves left or right based on what that h value is. So if I go into my First example, this has all the movements, okay? So it has an A, it has an H, and it has a K. So what I have to do first is I have to figure out those first key points. And they're always bound by reversing my exponential. So now that negative 1, 0, 1 is on the y value. It's going to be 1, 0. And then I look at what my base is. In this case, my base is 10. So it's going to be 10, comma, 1, or 1 tenth, comma, negative 1. Now what I do is I take my a value. And I would multiply by negative 3. Because it's negative, it's going to flip the normal shape of the graph. So now I have 3, 0, and negative 3. And now I can plot those. So 1 10, 3 is like right here. Actually, it's like really close here. One zero, probably in here. And then 10, negative 3 is like right there. So it kind of looks like this after the multiplication. Now I would move these points based on my h and my k. So this h is going to move. And this is going to move up 1. So my final result will be each point moves right 2, up 1. Right 2, up 1. Right 2, up 1. So it kind of looks like this. Okay? Now I have to draw in my asymptote, which is right where the H is, which is at 2. 
So it's going to be, because each one of these blocks is two and a half, it's going to be in here. Okay? So it's that vertical line. So the trick is to graph the originals and then move them. So for these next three, you'll notice that the bases are right here. So you're left with 1, 2, and then 1 half. And then you would move based on that. In this case, 3 and 1 third. And then you would move based on that, whatever that negative 1 does. Please try these problems and come next class with any questions. You should get a graph that looks something like that once you are done. Thank you.